Esperanza had never been so close to many pre peasants before. When she went to school, all of her friends were like her. When she went to town, she was escorted and hurried around any beggars, and the peasants always kept their dis dis distance. That was simply that way it was. She couldn't help but wonder if they would steal her things. Mama, said Esperanza, stopping at the doorway, we can't travel in this car. It is not clean, and the people do not look trustworthy. Trustworthy. Esperanza saw Miguel frown as she edged around her to sit down. Mama took her hand and guided her to an empty chip bench where Esperanza slid over next to the window. Papa would never have had us sit here and Abuelita wouldn't approve, she said stubborn, stubbornly. Mija, it is all we can afford, said Mama. We can just, we must make do. It is not easy for me either. But remember, we are going to a place that will be better than living with you, Louis, and at least we will be together. The train pulled out and set, settled into a steady motion. Hortensia and Mama took out their crocheting. Mama was using a small hook and white cotton thread to make a carpet lace dolls. To put under a lamp or a vase, she held up her work to Esperanza and smiled. Would you like to learn? Esperanza shook her head. Why did Mama bother crocheting lace? They had no vase or lamparas to put on top of them. Esperanza leaned their head against the window. She knew she did not belong here. She was Esperanza. Or Ortega, Ortega from El Rancho de las Rosas. She crossed her arms tight and stared out the windows for hours. Esperanza watched the undulation, undulating land pass in front of her. Everything seemed to be reminding, remind her of what she had left behind. The nobles reminded her of reminded her of Abuelita who loved to eat the prickly pear cactus sliced and soaked in vinegar and oil. The dog from small villages that barked and ran after the train reminded her of Marisol whose dog captain chased after trains the same way. And every time Esperanza saw a shin decorated wood crosses, flowers and Miniature statues of Saint next to the rail, she wouldn't help but wonder if it had been someone's father who had died on the track and if some if somewhere there there were another girl who missed him too. Esperanza opened her valise and checked on the doll, lifting it out and straightening her uh, straightening her clothes. The barefoot peasant girl ran over. Mona she, Mona, she said, and reached up to touch the doll. Esperanza quickly jerked it away and put it back, and put it back in the valise, covering it with the old clothes. Mona, Mona, said the little girl, running back to her mother, and then later she started crying. Mama and Hortensia both looked, stopped their needles, and stayed at Esperanza. Mama looked across at the girl's mother. I am sorry for my daughter's bad manners. No. Esperanza looked at Mama in surpri surprise. Why was she apologizing to these people? She and Mama shouldn't even be sitting in this car.